You know yeah. what they say about the mullet, right? Yeah, business up front, party in the back. That's exactly. <laughs> that's all you need to know about neuroscience, right there. Business in the front, <laughs> party in the back. And you're absolutely right. I mean, I think I think the most powerful tool is self-deprecating humor, which mm -hmm. I use like a lot, right? And so it's like because you're a millennial. Because <laughs> it's easy for you. Self-sabotage. Yeah. <laughs> it's because you're an easy target. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. I got a lot. Lots of material. Got a lot of material to work with. <laughs> it's like, okay, we got to go change uh, Ryan's personality. Yeah. So, <laughs> good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Pretty much, either gonna kill him or fire him. The first time you refer to your customers as they, right? Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to write that date down because that's when your business is going to start going downhill. Yeah. Right? We are psychosocial systems right mm -hmm. keyword there being psycho <laughs> <laughs> everybody's crazy I, I um i've worked with enough people to know that if you think you're alone in your craziness your weirdness you're you're not i Everybody. always say your crazy matches my crazy <laughs> yeah everybody's all to hell there yeah. you go everybody i know is all to hell <laughs>
I need a person for this role. I need to hire a person. We want them to be a people person. Mm -hmm. So you go hire a people person. Well, that's pretty pigeonholed, right? To rise in enterprise, you need to be able to do both. Knowing that you tend to lean left or you lean right, it mm. is all dependent on the moment. Like mm. you said, that's really said interesting. Mm. There's because mm. I I tell when I'm training photographers, I always tell them like there's there's generally two personalities and or, or two modes of the way people work in photography. You're either uh, someone who's very good th at the technical part, which is like really good for getting the clearest picture, getting light just perfect, and then there's these flitty photographers who are super creative. And just like flitting around, taking amazing pictures, but like technically flawed all yeah. over the place. And yeah. it's just it's really interesting seeing those two. Like like my my, my, my lead photographer is is the creative, and I'm definitely the technical. Yeah. And then uh, I get frustrated whenever like she turns over like we do an event together or something, and then she'll turn over uh, uh, photos that have been shot at like ten thousand ISO, and she's just like, "What? I don't know what settings are." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make you make each other's heads explode. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's not like. You are not creative, right? It's not right. And yeah, it's, that's it's, true. It's not like she can't do the technical exactly. part. Mm -hmm. So that's we call it work, doing yeah. what you don't feel like doing, and yeah. it depends on the moment. And yeah, so don't don't. I even hear you saying, "I am the technical type." Right. Well, you're you're a human being. Yeah, you yeah. May, you may lean toward like that's the room you're most comfortable working in, but yeah. don't don't use it as a permanent. Right, as yeah. a permanent label. It's kind of the stories we tell ourselves, right? And oh, yeah. you know, I wonder how many people, uh, you know, aren't good at math because somebody along the way said, "Oh, you're not very good at math," or they told themselves, "I'm not very good at math," and then it was a self fulfilling prophecy. A hundred percent. Well, and math oh, yeah. is a great example because right. how do you get better at math? Practice. You do math. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> how do you get better at peopling if you're a process person? You people, right? <laughs> you just you just do it. You just stretch, and you get better at it. Uh, get better at it over time. And if you're if you're really good at it, you 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 know you're able to shift. There's uh, been a so. couple uh, psychological studies of what you're just talking about, like being bad at something. Yeah. So there was a professor that took uh, half a student body and gave them each a test. One test was not passable. All the words was like, hey, create a word out of this these letters like pear or apple or whatever. And it's like, okay, I have all the easy words and all these other students had just gibberish. Yeah. And then they handed them a test. And the sig there was a major significance in the performance of the ones that actually were able to do it versus the ones that weren't. Mm -hmm. So like telling like those affirmations, it actually plays a key part in performance. It's actually yeah. really interesting how that works out. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've spent the better part of three years trying to learn how the brain works you know how we why we do the stuff we, we do and i i want to be able to explain it because it's it's um it's not as complicated as you know it sounds i i go with the mullet haircut to explain <laughs> how your how your brain works and i you, need to hear it you know yeah. what they say about the mullet right yeah business up front party in the back that's exactly <laughs> that's all you need to know about neuroscience right there business in the front <laughs> party in the back so your put your party in the back that's your system one if you put your hand on the back of your head that's system one and that's how we operate that operates under the radar that's our automatic transmission right that is just when you're doing things without thinking about them brushing your teeth Right, that's system one because you're, you, you do it and don't even remember that you did it. And it's good that we have that because it allows us to only focus on certain things on, with the business end on system two. System two is the slower thinking. It's where we take time to, to mull it. So rather, uh, I, I want to try to write this in a cute way, but mull, M-U-L-L, to consider to take time before you do something versus a mullet, which when it, your reaction, your automatic reaction. So with personality assessments, you wanna learn, you know, it's nothing, it's all of them are the same. It's about drawing lines between two words and putting the average person, the average um, imaginary normal person right in the middle and say, which side do you fall on, right? For us, for, for ours, the everything disc personality assessment, there's only two lines. That one that we've been talking about, the horizontal axis between the box on the left, science, process, 
and the circle on the right that's that's people you you just know which way you lean on that axis and i heard you say but let me ask you aaron if you had to if you had to choose are you more question do you tend to be more questioning and skeptical or do you tend to be more warm and accepting hmm Probably, probably warm and accepting. Okay, it's not me. So that is the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the hor that's that horizontal axis. If you have love on the right and logic on the left, then if you lean, you know, and it sounded like you struggled with that a little bit, you wouldn't have struggled w with that if you were question being, everything. Yeah, if you weren't <laughs> being if you're being honest, you're the scientist, you're the yeah. the skeptic, the and there is a time and place and a and a value in that, right? And there's also value in the other extreme what's important is knowing where you lie right because the when in the moment comes you have to uh, you have to be able to switch yeah because so I, think, I think that instinctively sometimes you know that the, the the thing that made me struggle with that is like you know what you tend to do but you also know what you ought to do yes right and exactly. so you struggle a lot of times you struggle against yourself and that's it's what it's nothing to, it, we overcomplicate things uh you, you know you say you have a different personality style at work than you do at home mm -hmm. which is not uh, that's that i can put that better i think okay your personality style by whatever measure will tell you how you tend to behave when nobody's watching how you tend to behave when you're not thinking about behaving 99 percent of the time we're thinking about behaving right so it, this <laughs> is not about what you do it's about where you like to play. It's, uh, I would say <clears throat> it's almost like when someone <clears throat> comes into a large sum of money and they say that money changed you, but money never changed them. It just amplified who they were. 100%. So like when someone wins the lottery, <clears throat> they become they had bad pompous, habits, bad habits. habits. Because they came to it so quick, those habits are going to change with it. Versus why does someone who works really hard to become a say, multimillionaire tends to keep it yeah. versus someone who wins the lottery who went from poor money habits they get a lot of money and they lose it all because i think it's like what over 50 a 60 70 percent of the lottery Majority winners end up oh, yeah. Yeah. now there are some who are already successful business owners are like hey it's great yeah. just make some more money with this um and they tend to keep it um but it's just it just amplifies who you are as a person yeah and we get you know we build up these patterns in our brains uh back in the back of your head you've got all these tiktok videos playing and then you 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 come into a new situation and these this algorithm spits out sort of a it's like you're parked at a drive-in the theater with a thousand videos going through you, through your head and your your algorithm even when you stop to think about it it's been programmed right and and as we measure personality style that's pretty set from the time at least from the time you're about 17 so when when people say well i, I read this assessment and you know this is not like me it used to be like me, but it's not like me anymore. Well, it, it is still like you. It's not your personality that's changed. It's your behavior. Yeah. And that is what. See, that's what I see about uh, the Enneagram, right? Mm -hmm. I see the Enneagram as a great description of modes of behavior. Yes. Right? Yeah. So I, I, I see like. And what is the Enneagram? I, I'm not familiar. Yeah, Enneagram not... is, is our, our numbers from one to nine that describe nine different personalities. And they're okay. very, like, I, I would say. What I, what I think the Enneagram has going for it is that they are very accurate at describing modes of behavior. Like, when I'm wanting to act a certain way, like, yeah, it's like, that's it. Yeah. That's it. And, and most, and I think that some people reside in certain behaviors for a majority of, of, of can, time. Can you go through them? The, the well, the, you know? the, no, the, there's so that. many different uh, assessments and ways to look at it. And probably the most popular right now, the one that gets the most buzz is the big five. Yeah. And I am partial to the DISC model that has been around for a hundred years and I'm partial to it because it's simple. We're not talking about nine different combinations. We're halfway there with, uh, so if you, if you, we have a horizontal axis, box on the left, circle on the right, okay? Mm -hmm. The vertical axis, that is simply your cruise control setting. It is speed, it's action, it's engagement. So two, we break you down randomly in two groups and we say, uh, I call the bottom group consider and the top group drive. And 
knowing that every day there are times that we consider before we move and there's times that we we just drive but on that scale Aaron if you had the normal person in the middle mm-hmm. you consider yourself more fast-paced and outspoken or more cautious and reflective if you had to choose um, do I have a number system here if if Norma is in the middle and Norma is right we line everybody in the country up okay from a rabbit to a turtle I'm the rabbit and you're closer to the rabbit than the turtle okay so what I'll just ask you two questions right are you more warm and accepting and you say that you are more warm and accepting and more fast-paced and outspoken so that sounds like the well, I, I, I style I don't know I, I don't know if I'm uh, I, I don't know if I'm fast but i but like i just it just never i just never stop ever that, yeah well that would be Energy, it, it's right? about yeah. go so yeah you, you like, like you're a bunny yeah, it's like it's like it's like the foot's on the pedal and it, 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 it don't even know where the brake is <laughs> well, that, that <laughs> vertical axis there can we can there's a lot of things that run along that line and 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 like your sense of agency right your sense of control over your own world is on that axis so if you're really high on that axis and i am off the chart mm-hmm. i am i am right at the top of that if you're if you're high on that, you think you have total control, and you uh, that is it's good and bad, right? Because I will dart out into traffic too. I will step yep. in front of a bus. I am great in a crisis, but you got to watch me. You got to watch a rabbit uh, because I'll take off, you know, 100 miles an hour in the wrong direction. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I will spend a lot of energy doing unproductive things. Yeah. Oh, me too. <laughs> and yes, but it's all about the motion, right? So that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's. Probably that's not the way James is wired. Uh, so I don't think James. So I don't know. I don't know. James. James is like. I don't know. He's kind of like a bulldog when it comes to work. He just like wants to sink his teeth in and just like go. Yeah, yeah. I do have a tendency to do that. I also like. I think the best way to describe me and I love you to know, interrupt it. By the way, one of my other <laughs> one of my other buddies is uh, um, uh, very cognitive and thinks things through all the time. Yes. Right. So, so that's this line: think and feel. Right. There you go, the right? box in the circle. And so, like, we just compare our Wordle styles, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, <laughs> he is, like, he, he sends screenshots, and I screenshot our Wordle and, like, our choice of words, right? And my choice of words is so much more instinctual, right? It's just, like, it popped in my head. That's what I'm putting in, right? Yes. And he's so much more strategic. And he's like, I can't believe you did a double letter as your second word award. That's crazy, <laughs> right? Like, you don't do that, right? But for him, like, it's not good strategy, right? So he's much more strategic, sitting back, thinking it through. So I would say I, I'm so probably – like, like, five guesses on <laughs> Wordle? Six uh, – yeah, six guesses. So did he yeah. always beat you? Like you only did like two his guesses? Numbers, yeah, his, like, yeah, generally speaking, he's better statistically than I am at the game, right? But I get some words really fast that he doesn't get sometimes. You have higher highs um, and lower lows. Yeah, 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 there you go. Right? <laughs> so yeah. it's pretty much my golf game too. Right? So <laughs> <laughs> well, between yeah. those um, – <clears throat> Sorry, between those uh, two axes there, now we've got a matrix. We've got a four mm-hmm. by uh, two by two matrix, uh-huh. and that is our disk pattern. So the 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 uh, D in the upper left hand corner that we tend to call dominant, and that that's what I was saying before that uh, I think the words should be verbs, and that that when you're in the D style is when you do. It, that is where you get stuff done and it's about work it's about winning right and then when you're in that d style it's about that's get it done that's me the <laughs> i style behavior that is more fast paced but it's more people oriented that's about enthusiasm that's about let's get going right it's uh, y- you know maybe get more things going than you get completed right <laughs> yeah get, yeah too many balls up in the air that that uh, represents that I style and then below the I style it's on the people side but more methodical more considerate you have the S style which I think James if I remember right we'll look you up yeah but that S style is steadiness it is it is service show up salt of the earth mm-hmm. smile it is friendly harmony right don't want to don't want to mess up the the harmony. Yeah. And then you have the C style, which is a, which in the lower left-hand corner, that is more methodical paced and 
more focused on the what's than the who's. Mm -hmm. That C style, conscientious, again, changing that to verbs, the C style wants to correct. They want it right. Like, can't stand the thought of it being <laughs> wrong. I think we have every single one in this room. I'm sure. Yeah. D I S C. That's 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 a good that's a good guess, and I think you are probably close to the middle, Aaron. I, I feel uh, because usually I can I can tell pretty well, and I have a hard time little hard time judging you. I think you're close to the middle. So if you're at, you know in that center, is where we want to live when we're when when we have the need to take the time to think about what we're going to do next. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to move toward that center, recognize that, hey, I'm way over here, tend to be way over here on the process side. It's a time to people now. And, and that's the beauty of the time out. Call time out and, you know. So, yeah, verbs, it's about what we do. It's about what you do and say. It's not, uh, I can't know what you think and feel. I can on only uh, know what you do. Uh, we so actually we see what you do words. and say. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I think that's also a powerful statement, too, <clears> that um, because people have a tendency to sometimes use it as a crutch, right? Uh, right. Use their personality as or a as crutch. Or as an excuse, yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, I'm not capable of that, right? Yes. Because it, just because you're stronger at one thing doesn't mean you're incapable of doing something else. It means you have to maybe it's called like work, work harder at it right yeah, you'd have to work harder to get over for me to get way over to the process side of things i have to like actively work hard to do that right me too. uh yeah. and so but it doesn't mean you can't do it right, right. right. Yeah. and the the way you get better at it again practice right yeah. practice practice because uh you know i've seen cody grow in his uh, networking when we first you know started going to networking yeah. meetings cody was not comfortable and I still hate it. And uh, <laughs> I, can, I cannot stand like but you one can on one is one now, thing, right? but you standing can, up and having thirty eyes, I just I do not like that one minute pitch. Oh, I can, love it. You can I do it. Now, it. Yeah. I do not like it. I love it. And, and it, it gives puts, me it just puts too. you in this little yeah. pedestal. And it's like well, if I say something wrong, everyone's gonna judge what I say. I will say I do not like it. When I started public speaking, um, I was very nervous, <clears throat> but as I, I I would say, just obviously repeating it over and over again and doing it, I got a lot more comfortable, but. As the crowd size got bigger, I got even more comfortable with it because I would say, like, yeah. I think the biggest crowd I've ever spoken to was a thousand. It was a thousand real estate agents. It was at an event in DC I did, and the way I guess I, I've gotten comfortable with it is I, the room is more of a blur to me, yeah, and I don't focus on one person's face, so I don't really feel like I'm talking to anyone. I, I would say I feel more nervous talking to a group of five people than of a thousand people. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I'm I'm, the, I'm kind of the same way. That yep. I, I can speak to a lot of people on a regular basis and be a hundred percent fine. Because you do that at church pretty frequently, yeah. right? Is that? Yeah. Well, you know yeah. that uh, Jerry Seinfeld. It's called glossophobia, right? The fear of public speaking, and yeah. it is the number one fear of of people. You public speaking is number one. Death is like number four, <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> Seinfeld says so. Wow, pub people are more afraid of public speaking than they are of death. So that says that if you go to a eulogy, people go to a funeral, they would rather be in the casket than doing the <laughs> eulogy. Yeah, than delivering the eulogy. <laughs> but yeah, it that's... is all hmm. about repetition. You just do it over and over. Yeah, and I'm over definitely again. more. Get... I'm comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. I just yes. don't like it. I think you 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 learn how to like get a hold of that fear and like harness it to, to actually make you a lot better. It does. Yes. And I think the people who are the most nervous about public speaking do the best, do the best job because they prepare. Right. I yeah. am, I am so, so confident that I don't do the work in preparing. Yeah. I, I get, I get nervous, but I guess it's more of like more of an excitement Yeah. type of nervous. Uh, well, they're the same. They're, your body doesn't know the difference. Right? And the bigger the crowd, I feel like the, the more on my game I get because I'm just so hyper-focused in the moment. I'm not focusing on anything, um, I guess, because the fear of being judged and uh, or screwing up. But at the end of the day, I'm not, doing, up. I'm not doing a comedy thing where I, I get booed off, off stage or anything. So, like, it's not like I can have that open. But, like, when I did that thousand-plus people presentation, I was there to sell something. So there was that out goal I had, that goal I needed. Like, if I don't do well – this event's going to suck and we're not going <laughs> to sell anything. And and I have to deliver. So I'm like doing a sales pitch, which is even harder, I would say, versus just trying to give a motivational speech. Right. Um, but I've done this talk. I've done that same pitch 
thousand times over and over again and slightly tweaked it, you know, for different things based off the location. But I would say having that repetition so many times just made it so much easier. Well, Dale Carnegie, you know, the Dale Carnegie Speech and Human Relations course, which I took as a young 20 something year old, the, the whole point of that, you go for 12 weeks and you make three speeches every night. And at the end of that 12 weeks, you you know, when I first started that, I, I was just, I could not, you know, but after 12 weeks doing it 36 times in front of a crowd, you get better at it. Comedians do it. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. The same entire hour long special that you see on Netflix when they do on tour. It's the same exact thing. Now, I maybe t- with slight differences, but it's usually the same it speech. is uh, random hecklers uh, and what's the whatnots right? exactly speech. and they work yeah. out their material in the small clubs to get yep. to the to get to the uh, big clubs right and some of them like that right like because that andrew, makes it interesting. Yeah, andrew schultz is big on working the crowd when it, when i yeah 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 before before the uh, before fresh move when i was in sales management and i was running trainings every single week i was like I had done it so many times that I could do it in my sleep. Yeah. And I almost loved when, like, there was something new that happened, right? right. <laughs> Whether it was, like, a trainee being annoying or difficult or whatever. It was. Like, I loved that because it had just gotten so just kind of boring, right? Womp, womp, and, womp, yeah. womp, womp, womp. and well, uh, you know, yeah. I do the – I take the opposite approach, Ryan, of you. And, and that is one, – one thing I learned early on in public speaking is that the audience wants you to succeed. Right. Yes. yes. And so they they're there for a show. And Every, they'll laugh at stuff that's not funny. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I always I look up and I find the the S style friendly face in the crowd who I can tell is supporting me. Nodding along, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. And I want to talk to that person. And you know, for especially like I, I will find in the crowd who's my who's my friendly face and I'll go back. It's go back funny. To I do the exact same thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's usually a couple key people that you look around in the room and and you're absolutely right. I mean, I think I think the most powerful tool is self-deprecating humor, which mm-hmm. I use like a lot, right? And so it's like because you're millennial. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for love you. To make fun Self-sabotage. Of yeah. It's because you're an easy target. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I got a lot. Lots of material. Got a lot of material to work with. Uh, so it's it, but but that like because it's it comes back to your point that they do want you to succeed. So if you mess up on a word or you say something wrong. If you're able to laugh it off or to like be self-deprecating in that moment, they immediately are on your side, yeah. right? Which Don't is pretty screw. powerful. We just we we all take ourselves way too seriously. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, people are are sitting to hear you. They're they're going to hear you talk. Maybe they'd rather be somewhere else, or, or maybe they. But just show up and do your job, right? And show mm. up and do it over and over and over again, and you get better at it. I've replaced um with. Uh, Words are hard. Words are hard. Like, give me a minute. Words are hard. <laughs> like, I have it. Instead right of here. using a crutch word, like yeah. a numb. Yeah. Like, I, I've had days of a minute speech and just having a night where my daughter was up all night being tired, going, yeah. driving there. I'm like, I can't think right now. Give me a minute. Words are very hard. And then I'm going to start and yeah. then go on my way. And that gives you like that couple seconds to react to the flight or flight response. And then mm-hmm. you start talking to it. That's how I've gotten comfortable with it because I've noticed if I just start, it's way worse. Well, and you're also showing some level of um, uh, authenticity, right? You're like, all right, I'm not totally with it, right? And you're announcing that to the audience, and that actually like makes them I've had days where I'm like, I, I feel like crap. I'm just here today because I have to show up. As I, if you guys want a one-on-one after this, it's totally fine. Yeah. Have a nice day. I've yeah. done that. Yeah. I've had B and I meetings where I just don't feel like talking, yeah. and I've said that. Yeah. They sat down. They say showing up is, <laughs> is half of it. Uh, I, I like, think it's a lot more than that. Yeah, yeah. Show, yeah. Sh- showing up and is an overused buzzword, but being present, right? It, it, everything depends on the moment. Mm-hmm. And it, I don't care where you come from. I don't care where your personality style, you know, makes you lean. I don't care what your background is. It's just in the moment. Be aware. Be present. You know, is it a time to move fast or a time to move slow, a time to people or a time to process and just do the right thing? That's management. Do you what what would you say are some of the biggest traps that leaders fall into relating to personalities? Right. We talked a little about, obviously, the, you know, using as a crutch. Right. That sort of of thing. Right. Yeah. I think the, the of course, the biggest mistake in in general that not not mistake 
But if I could give young managers something to work on, it is self-awareness. Knowing, you know, read all the books, take all the personality assessments to figure out how you line up among other people. Because it's not good or bad or right or wrong. It's just being aware of how you tend to react in the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, in those important moments, you can, you can call time out. Uh, there's that space between react and respond. Right, that finding that space, and I call that presence. That is that is showing up, being present. Hmm. Interesting. So it's you you ask a, what other you know mistakes with with person. For one thing, a critical mistake is hiring based on a personality assessment, and that is wrong mm -hmm. in many ways. Not least of which, you can find yourself in court because the. The, uh -oh. your personality PHI. style <laughs> your personality style is not predictive of success in any particular position mm. right so if you like you think this c style and that's my wife and she happens to be an accountant <laughs> right and <laughs> and accountants and engineers are tend to be drawn to, you know people who are c style tend to tend to be drawn to those fields but there is nothing Nothing that says an I style can't be an engineer or a C style can't be a salesperson. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have found that the most effective salespeople are have that C style. They're quiet, methodical. They want to get things right. Those are, you know, because it's all about building trust and they make effective uh, salespeople. So that is the number one mistake. Never, ever, ever use uh disc or myers-briggs or anything like that don't even give it before uh, before a hire but the first day get, give them that assessment let's see how we all line up so that it's not good bad right or wrong just understand why this person over here tends to like to shut the door and work alone while this person over here is boom boom shake up the room all you know tends to be all the time just knowing yourself and knowing how you stack up against other people is, is critical yeah wow that's interesting we got to change up how we hire people but we don't have them do a personality. I thought you didn't. Mm, no, I don't. I oh. no, not we for, did. Not for years. Not for a yeah. while. Yeah, not it's for years. But probably since you, maybe. Emotional intelligence 2.0. A lot. Since you. I yeah. swear so. we've done this for every hire. No. Or yeah. you did it with every hire. A lot of, <laughs> yeah. a, a lot Guess of people do. I just yeah. would I would be very, very cautious about that. Yeah. And, and the, th the message there is that if you are, you know, your personality style is not a, it is what it is. Right, know that it's it there. It is what it is, but it does not, it does not limit you f in your career options. And my my career path and my career, my thought of a career is kind of I, I only have a one track mind, and that is it's part of you know, it, go to the top, be a CEO, be a general manager, and that is that skill set to be a ceo starts with being able to run a fruit stand you know with a hand with a handful of people to uh, get that general management concept between what is what is operations and what sales right what is it? and too many, too often, we get people like me that'll come through MBA school, get a job, go through finance or whatever, then be named a general manager, and never have seen the never have seen the real world. So they don't have that skill set coming in. It's like uh, companies that hire within tend to do better. Would you say then? I, well, I certainly would promote. I would certainly look within always. Yes, so like, I would like say. For example, um, Chick Fil A does that. Yes. McDonald's does McDonald's that. Does that. Yep. Um, Always first, because you got you you for one thing, the pigeonhole. When we start labeling people, like we hire someone to be an X, and then we start thinking of them as an X, and then a position comes up for a Y, or we we don't think about that person for a Y, and then they quit and go to work somewhere else as a why so this conversations about where you are now and where you want to go and what you're doing we, we gotta you know people are not little processes sit, sitting at a desk it takes getting to know people and there's no there's there's no um, better way to get to know people than to go around and talk to people yeah it, it, it didn't rocket science practice <laughs> practice well i do think i do think what you're saying is interesting i mean we should uh reinstitute uh personality assessments 
once somebody's in training probably right because i know a I've, guy who can help you with it yeah there you go right i i uh because i i've always found them to be valuable like the test i was using years ago was cvi core values index right yeah. which is like interesting it's again four quadrants right you know different personalities but i've always found them to be uh to at least be a starting place for a conversation okay, starter yeah and like how like how would this person uh, just kind of innately react to a given situation, right? Whether they are mature or immature will obviously impact like whether they're able to move like we were talking about yeah. from here. I, I, I think that's probably like, you know, the book I was just reading, which uh, which is actually similar to uh, uh, what we talked about um earlier with using foul language right yes. which is uh uh, uh everything is effed right yes. is what it is and uh love and, that book yeah and it's 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 very fantastic but one of the things he was talking about the second about, book too yeah uh, the, the subtle, subtle art, art of not, not giving, giving enough yes. right yes. um so what i what i liked about it though which was kind of a um you know moved my thinking a little bit was the idea of people moving from childhood to adolescence to adult right hood and the maturity factor then factoring into their ability to impact their actions on a daily basis it, 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 it like uh separate from their personality right yes. meaning like not just innately act on whatever they're like kind of predisposed to do to make a conscious decision to say oh this is uncomfortable but i'm going to do it anyways yes right and that being like the reflective of like maturity level. And it, it, that starts with recognizing uh, where you line up and putting a language to it, right? And that's mm -hmm. what I like so much about the DISC model and those two axes is it makes for a lot easier to have those kind of conversations than you have um, something, you know, like Myers-Briggs or the Big Five or those. I would consider them like an MRI where DISC is an X-ray. Right, so we can we can very quickly say uh, we can we can see on a picture you tend to come from here I tend to come from here how can we make this work mm. as opposed to four different axes I tend to be cut you know it, it's it's much simpler but yeah having the conversation you when you learn this language of disc then you can you start picking it up and you see, and you could start employing it in your strategic in your strategic decisions to me it, it's like because you're you're culture an overused term that is one of those circle words over here that's <laughs> subjective it synergy means, yeah. means what is synergy <laughs> ideation it's a great weird a uh, weird owl song on the yeah. uh, mission called mission statement <laughs> but, you gotta uh, look that up. weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you got to look up mission yeah. statement that should be the the uh, i love it, it should nice. be the background music it is nothing but business buzzwords all the, all the way through it oh nice. man i would love that yeah that's but what great. were which one were we talking about um Missions. Culture. 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 Yes, culture. Yeah. Here's another word for culture. Personality style. Your group has a personality style. You ain't going to go out there and change it. You, uh, We spend time talking about you got to go creating, change the creating culture. Creating your culture. Change your culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is... Huh. Uh, it's like okay, we got to go change uh, Ryan's personality. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Pretty much, either gonna kill him or fire him. It, <laughs> One it or the other. is. <laughs> it, it is what it is, and it will change when it changes, and it will change in ways that you don't expect, and from causes that you don't know about. Culture is your personality style. The way you, the if you want to change your personality style, fire everybody and and hire hire new people. And I think there's there's a better way. It, culture is like personality style. In understand it, get to know it, try to feel it. Mm. But you can't manage it. It is not a manageable thing. And if you, I think we. We take all these subjective con uh, concepts, mission, vision, values, purpose, start with why, blah, blah, blah. How do you put that in a box and actually, okay, we're going from X to Y by when, right? What do you, read a mission statement off the Internet. Pick one at random. And there's about five companies that it makes sense to have a mission statement and they really, you know. But otherwise, mission, vision, values, it's uh, all this fluffy stuff. Those five companies, who would you, rec who would you say those are? Uh, like one or two for well of course think different apple think mm -hmm. different yeah. i mean that speaks volumes about uh about apple but v 
vision, vision, the other most overused word, Apple is a great example of it was not about vision. It was not vision that built, that built Apple. It was focus. To this day, Apple, every, every product they make would fit on a table in this room right here, right? Trillion dollar company. Well, I work with small business owners that want to start a new LLC to go off and do this. Oh. And focus. It's not about vision. People think Steve Jobs was a visionary. He was a Buddhist. He's about presence, about being being there in and the moment. And he did a lot of so. acid too. And, and, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe some mushroom, maybe a little. Uh, <laughs> and and the other thing is, you know, you're not Steve Jobs. So, no. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so mission, focus, vision, values. Focus, it, it, like limiting their product line, right? And focusing on these this limited product the, line would be the the one word that we underuse, while we overuse mission, vision, value, strategy, purpose, start with why, we underuse the word serve. Serve and service. That is the essence hmm. of enterprise, and that should be the axis around all the conversation is on that. service. I would say hmm. to a point, well, Apple will shake your hand if you spend over five grand in their store. Um, I know this because <laughs> <laughs> I've experienced it. Um, but um, I would say from a service standpoint, I would say Apple tends to deliver that in their in their packaging and their products. Everything, yeah. yeah. Everything. It's like it's well, like I always put a testament to Apple's packaging. It's, it's it's simple. It's clean. You. It's very easy to understand how to use the the user interface. Is even from just the pack packaging. It's just there's a flawless like the dumbest person on the planet can understand how to use yeah. uh, a thing like an Apple watch or whatever, which I got one the other day just for the gym. And it was took me less than five minutes to set it up yep. with no instructions. And obviously the Apple does have, um, they can help you set up there. Cause there's always the people who are still, in my opinion, too dumb to yeah. figure out the simple. <laughs> <stuff. Technically iterate. laughs> yeah. Or it, well, it's the people who just don't want to put in the work. I would say to learn it like this, like, oh, I see tech and my mind just goes, yeah. here, you do it. Well, um, you, you know, you buy a phone, not for the phone. You buy the phone for the service that it gives you, right? You, your, your customers, your clients don't, don't want to spend money on marketing. Yeah. They're buying the service that it, that it gives you. And yeah. why don't we use the word serve all the time, right? How does this serve our customer? Um, I think if we use that a little more often and mission, vision, value is a little less. Yeah. yeah. IT because companies don't, you don't make businesses money. I will tell you another. another oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, that's, that is my industry. I serve businesses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Another word for serve, profit. What does it profit a man to gain the world? And, you know, back in the day, profit mean, means to serve. And it should today. We think about we service is profit, right? If you're, if you are, Interesting. I, if I am, marketing is always two-way, right? We go marketing. We, that, that's another thing. Back on old-time radio shows, they would say, we're going marketing on Sunday. That is to go marketing. It's a buyers and sellers. And those are not two different kinds of people. Those are just two people who meet in the marketplace, and they exchange service. So when the buyer gets a product, they have profited. If they have made that decision that that product is, worth my, is, is not only worth the $5 I'm going to give to it, but it's worth more than $5. Right. Or I wouldn't pay five dollars for it. It's yeah. worth more than five dollars to me. We don't know what the profit is mm -hmm. that that buyer gets. We don't know and can't know. quantify it. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, and mm -hmm. our, our goal when we sell is to pr profit the customer as much as possible and profit ourselves. And you make that exchange. There's profit and loss from both sides. If you look at the, you know, you look at the accounting from one side to the other, it's just, it's, it's just a trade. It is people serving each other. And let's huh. talk about that. And not, wow. not, that's a different perspective. Yeah, that's a powerful yeah, concept. I haven't like thought that. about that. Yeah. yeah. There's profit and loss in everything, right? Profit. We don't call it a profit or loss statement. 
We call it profit and loss. There's profit and loss in everything that we do. It is just basic human nature. We're looking for the most benefit for the least cost. And the difference between them we call profit. So uh, hmm. if a, a buyer and seller are, are you know, there's, there's mutual profit or there's no deal. And, and that's the way we should think about it, that the value, if I pay, if I pay you $1,000 for your service, I don't think it's worth $1,000. Or I wouldn't give you, I, I think it's worth more than, a, it's worth more than $1,000 to me. Yeah, that's, to, that's been one be. of our, that's been one of my biggest pushes for our uh, lead gen ads that we do, right? Yes. Uh, and so my, my whole goal is to be worth way more money than someone would spend on us. Yeah, 100%. Yep. Because if you want, you, you want to be more profitable, you provide more profit. You profit mm -hmm. your customers more because people you become more profitable. People stop looking at you like you're a price tag. Right. And people start looking at you like a little money pit. Yeah. Well, you're, you're solving problems, uh, you know, pains, all the different yeah, ways we have to say this. more value. I think yeah. that serve is the, is the word, service. And, cool. um, yeah. and it also yeah. it also makes you uh, that 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 focus makes you less one dimensional, mm -hmm. right? Because you're 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 more about a goal and more about accomplishing something than you are about just like I want to work this way, do and do exactly this and get out. Yeah, I want to do what's easiest for me. You're no it's longer thinking I want to do what's easiest for me. You're thinking. It's What's going to move exactly? If you think of a new person that comes to work in a in a factory or comes to work at McDonald's, right? If they and their job is to serve, to serve the owner of that McDonald's, to serve the customers uh, uh, there. I tell you, if you sh just show up for a week, you you know start at uh, ten bucks an hour, and you show up for a week, you might get eleven just for showing up. And if you smile, you might get twelve. But if we think about if we talk to that person who goes to work at McDonald's and say, you want to make more money? Give more service. Give better service, and I, I think it's just the way we should uh, we should approach everything. It it takes the because the other way to look at it is it's all a fight. It's all competition. We got to fight, fight, fight. It's a war, and uh, you think of your words like strategy and target well, marketing yeah. and on and on. Yeah. Well, or we could just serve each other. We can show up and serve each other, and whoever serves best wins. It's a mm -hmm. game. In that instance, <clears throat> what would you recommend? to say, um, I, I'll give an example. Um, I had a buddy of mine who worked um, at CarMax on the corporate side. Um, more IT developer coding type stuff. He found a $23 million error. Um, it was just, it was a thing that was just wasn't, it was missed. And if it kept going, it would have continued to lost, lost money. And he fixed it, and it saved the company $23 million. Mm -hmm. All he got was a thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's and he went, he went above and beyond and went down the rabbit hole, as it were, to find it and then fix the problem and then showcase, hey, I found this. That's what he's paid to do. I would No. Yeah, and that's, <coughs> I, I, it, it wasn't. So was he, it a developer? Uh, it was, but it, it's like it wasn't technically his job, but he just noticed something. It's like, what, like, oh, that's technically not my department. And he could have just pass it off to anyone in the department yeah. head. But if it's something that's that big and it's not been noticed for a so long time, so he went over yeah. and beyond. And he went above, like this. so. But, in that but let's, let's he quit a uh, two weeks later. Yeah, <laughs> and and that, I wonder that, why. It's yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's a management failure for sure. But if you, on the other hand, if you think about your balance sheet, right? Your balance sheet for your company is a sort of the status of where where you are. Today, it's sort of what's what it's, it's these are the assets. This is what I own and what I owe. When you have done something like that, like I've saved a company twenty three million dollars. If they don't appreciate that at the company you work for now, they will at the next company that you that you work for. So that's why we got to have this this the, that conversation. Right. Um, yeah. Because yeah, service by definition, has to be selfless. You can't be, you, you, you can't engage w by thinking about the outcome. You have to be thinking about the service, and that's where your process mentality comes in, right? Yeah. This is our process for, yeah. for giving service. Yeah, if that was everything will revolve around it. If that was his job, if your company's having $23 million pitfalls everywhere, I think you have a, a bigger problem. Oh, absolutely, so, but, yeah. Um, what, what would you say then to the people who have managers that are like that to where 
they just don't recognize the talent or the massive win that this person just had. It's like, cool, thanks. Yeah, I, I don't know. Cause we, we, <laughs> I mean, we, well, because well, you, you talked about that, like, um, like the earlier before the podcast, like lords and peasants and yeah. this whole um, certain management system where some people just get like this authoritative uh, complex and yeah, I hate do what to, you're told. It, it is, we have a real problem with white collar arrogance. White uh, collar arrogance. Mm. We talk about it and think about our words again that we use. We tend to use as if they're friendly words like en- engage. You know, we want the empl- employees engage. All these, all these quantifiers. Yeah, and we don't, we don't just show up and 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 talk to people. So we do pizza parties for our employees, and that's that's how we reward them. And you know, <laughs> different different people are motivated by different things. Yeah, this is yeah. another mistake we make. Is that because I would be really in, in that situation if I saved the company money, I'd want my face plastered all over the uh, you know the the newsletters and everything. There, you probably wouldn't, right? Uh, it, it's it's uh, that's a personality I, yeah, thing. I corrected what was wrong. Yeah, I, would, I made it right. Yeah. I, I would yeah. say you'd probably want to be monetarily maybe get a bonus. I, yeah. I would. I think you, I would bucks. No, I, <laughs> I, I want a certain percentage <laughs> of that twenty three million <laughs> you saved. Yeah, I did. I fixed what was wrong. That's yeah. all that matters is that something was broken and I fixed it. And yeah. there's something I could care less. Something to be said for showing up and doing your Thanks. job and doing it well. But like, like, if you don't do it, if you don't take, if you, if you show up and you give service, and your 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 value when you showed up at McDonald's was twelve dollars an hour, and you keep giving that good service, your value is going to go up within McDonald's. And if it does not, you go somewhere else, right? Yeah. It's it's the w- that's the kind of honest conversations we ought to be having with people. We still act like people show up and spend thirty years at a place and get the gold watch. Yeah, and we still tri- we still act like there's management up here and there's labor down here. Well, I don't know a manager who doesn't work, and I don't know a worker who doesn't manage, and we all serve. If we could just, huh? You know, we're yeah. all people and we're all so serving. Like the movie Office Space. When they found that rounding error, yeah, it's seven. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, and they're like it's just pennies, and it's just gonna be a little bit, and it ends up being what the, the, the banner does. they bring in the consultants, and the banner says, "So with every decision you make, ask yourself, is this good for the company?" <laughs> 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 so a recent prospect that I've just had, um, they go down to the seventh decimal point for counting. Because they do everything uh, by weight, so uh-huh. aluminum, right? Mm. They weigh everything by aluminum, and it's it's the tolerances it's, have to be so it's tight. It's pennies, yeah. But when you're dealing with tons and tons of metal, it's millions yeah. of dollars. Yeah, I was like, you go how far down? It's like point zero 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 one. It uh, is yeah. wild. It's it's yeah. like that when doing manufacturing overseas. Um, they the C, the country with the C, because I'm trying to avoid <laughs> saying that <laughs> word. Um, every time I, hi- I just I say mm-hmm. that word, I think of Trump saying it. <laughs> 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 so you know exactly what country I'm talking about. Um, they've definitely gotten better over the years, and I don't see it as much anymore, but I would say like early 2014, 2015, when I was getting quotes from overseas for products, it was fractions of pennies. Mm-hmm. Because obviously the, the dollar, rates. well, not just that, but it's just the cost of doing business, they – get it down to so little because their profit margins are so so small because they're essentially using <coughs> probably slave labor um to yeah. manufacture yeah. some of this stuff yeah um or just the people who are working there are working for you know a two or three dollars a day so that's they're just getting down to that mm. seventh decimal point as it were and I'm like why can you just like round it up for me or around uh, but i've noticed now i think almost everything that i get now quote wise is just like you see when you're buying something at the store. They don't do that anymore. I think it's just a conditioning standpoint, but I've just noticed that country does Well, it could well. also be that you have a relationship now and you've been working with them for a while, right? And so now they... Well, no. Any quote I do oh, from really? any of the stuff I bought, like the sign just I got. got rid of that? Yeah. It's just, I think it's just as they've gotten used to dealing with us, they yeah. just, they round up. Yeah. It's like gas, yeah. gasoline, tenth of a cent. Yeah. I've never seen it change. It's always 0.99, but... Of well, it's more attractive when yeah. it's point nine. That, that extra penny, right? It's the extra is penny. Nine tenths that's, of a, that's a yeah. that's a mental. Yeah. Uh, that's a marketing tactic. Yeah. See, I, those are the the kinds of enterprises I, 
that I don't want to be in, right? Where those <laughs> margins are so slim and the, and the gas, it's hard to be the best in the world at, at, pump, at being the, the choosing. Well, get the volume, right? Liquid yeah. volume, metals, stuff like but that. That just you means you're working way more for less, it feels like. Mm. Yeah. And hey, congratulations and so on doing this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so you, d you don't have, like, what do you do to differentiate yourself in, like, a super co commoditized? I mean, theoretically, what you're describing, though, is one way to potentially do it if you're <laughs> that kind of business is people. serve, right? Yes, yes. So if you were serving people more, then people will pay more for your commodity. And so then before you know uh, it, it's not to tell more. Not to tell you guys your, your job, because you, you know a lot more about Suck it than I it. ever will. <laughs> But marketing is just all about identifying the person that you want to serve, right? The yeah. face and the this is yep. this is our ideal customer. This is what pain they are in. This is how we can serve them better than anyone else in the world. It's literally the proposal meeting that we just had. Yep. Yep. And you know what's so funny about that is that this particular business has a ton of different things. They have beer, they have food, they have. Uh, it feels like it's know, too much. They have mini golf. They have a million things, right? The shotgun blast. And they're also they're also trying to yeah, do it yeah. for a million different types of people, right? Meaning they're doing it for people like kind of the club scene late night. They're doing it for families during the day. They they have like a ton of target demos, right? And I was just asking about. Who are you trying to reach? Who are you trying to speak to? And they're like, kind of anyone. Right? Everyone. Yeah. It's, everyone is. We like, want well, their money. <laughs> you know, in digital, we say if you try to talk to everyone, you end up talking to no one, right? So if we're gonna if we're gonna you know work together, it's about identifying a very specific demo, and you can have multiple ones, right? Because yeah. like you serve people differently. Yeah. We but, need to break it down. But I'm, you need to break it down. And you need to like have the right conversation with the right people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not not a whole. You, you know. Usually three or four. If you if you have three or four avatars and yeah. the, the, that, but I believe you put a when you put a face to it instead of uh, you know when you it, the first time you refer to your customers as they mm -hmm. right I want to I want to write that date down because that's when your business is going to start going downhill yeah. right yeah. it is not. They. It's about a single person out there, and and yeah, it's an imaginary person. And we have three. We have uh, you know this family person, this whatever, and three different walks of life. And then just deciding how um, how you want how you can serve them better than anybody else. And yeah. it's not yeah. any more complicated. Than that. <clears throat> yeah. Like this this prospect on their Instagram. Um, the owner came up. He's like, "What do you think of our Instagram?" I'm like, that's a very blunt question. Yeah. I looked at it, and it's very has a very clubby scene. And after we've gone through this entire like tour, it's like that's not the image you want to portray uh, for what you're trying to. Because that's yeah, really just one that's small one subset slice of audience versus and, all this other. And stuff. And I understand audience. why it's being shown is because the person who's in that role, that's who they are. They're yeah. a young marketing person and that's what attracts them yeah. you know to be in that club scene but that's not going to attract you to go play the putt putt or pay for that or there's someone who has the money in golf money to have the like the three they have three golf simulators yeah mm -hmm. these are expensive and yeah. actually i would say one of them is probably one of the most advanced ones in richmond yeah. uh, i would say yeah. i don't i cannot yeah. think of anyone else well that and, has a system and a, that and a corporate client that would want to do an outing there is not going to go to their instagram and see if like, they see that like, it's like <laughs> eh, i don't want it yeah it's just yeah. So there needs to hmm. be a correction there, but it's all that I would say the person who's currently doing it just yeah. obviously just doesn't know or understand, but they're just they have so much. So we have to break it down individually to each, like almost treat each entertainment venue they have as a difference it's, as its own business. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is exciting because a lot of billable hours. More, more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's more videos we gotta do, more content, everything. But yeah, I mean, it's it it is. I think it's amazing how many times business owners fall into the trap of trying to just be everything for everyone. Right? Yeah, you can't make and everybody happy. You're not you're not pizza. Yeah, it's efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> we're not. Okay, we're they not do have pizza there. Yeah. Yeah. They, they say it's very good. <laughs> so you reminded me something earlier talking about, um, or it reminded me of efficiency. When I worked in manufacturing up in uh, semiconductor plant, we had these, um, this. Oh, how do I say it without being an ass? Uh, it was a it was a department of uh, operations. Um, that thought they could beat automation. 
So they were manually overwriting where these lot numbers were going to tools. And OSHA requires you to have so many fire drills every so often. So they had a fire drill and the fab closed down for two hours. The factory productivity shut up by like 300%. <laughs> so to your $23 million, you know, what would you do in that situation? They restructured that whole department. Yeah. They just essentially fired everybody in there because the software was doing essentially what they were breaking. Yeah. They were trying to manually override everything and they were not being efficient whatsoever. Wow. So it's like that service that they thought they were doing was actually hurting the company. Mm-hmm. And this is m- And then multi- you also have to, have to ask yourself, were they doing it to feel important, right? Or, That's just how they you know, were trained. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. a number one lot. This needs to be pushed across the factory floor. Yeah. However, the lot number was already flagged as a priority lot, so the software knew to push it ahead of everything what's it, else. What's yeah. it, that scientific study? You probably have seen it where... They showed like three people in a waiting room, um, and then they had the one person stand up every time mm. she heard the beep go off. And then everyone else well, well, up. well, and yeah. then uh, she just the per- the people, two people watching, kept you know seeing what was going on, and they kept Standing every time up. standing up. Okay, yeah. after like the fourth, fifth time seeing her doing it, the next person would stand up, and monkey then see, monkey and then eventually that one person would come out. But then you have those two people. Um, who kept doing it when new people came in? When they kept doing it, but yeah. they turn off the sound of the of the noise. Yeah, yeah. So now you just had a room of people just going up and down <laughs> for no, <laughs> no reason, reason. Yeah. and people who never heard the bell from the first time. Yeah. So it's yeah. just like conditioning. They know, did the or, same thing yeah. with uh, uh, what was it a bottle of fleas? So they actually had a bottle of uh, uh, fleas that they s- sat in a container, and then they put it on a lid, and then it can it, they can only jump so high. They took the lid off. They would never jump any higher than the lid. Mm-hmm. Introduced new fleas, and then the new fleas would do the same thing. Yeah, you can tie an elephant's leg to a stake. The in stake, the ground, yeah, right? yep. At birth, yeah. and then they'll know how better how big they were. They won't pull against it. Yeah. It's it's astonishing. There's a uh, it's called the blue dot effect. Um, they did a study of uh, people to on a screen find the blue dot, and then as time went on, the dot got less and less and less, and eventually there was no blue dot, and people were still finding the blue dot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's always a problem to be found. Yeah, it's wild. We are um, we are psychosocial systems, right? Mm-hmm. Key word there being psycho. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Everybody's crazy. I, I um, I've worked with enough people to know that if you think you're alone in your craziness, your weirdness, you're you're not. Everybody. I always say your crazy <laughs> matches my crazy. Yeah, everybody's all to hell. There yeah. you go. Everybody I know is all to hell. Um, what else you guys want to talk about? Uh, we're getting close to the hour mark, yeah. so yeah. I, I mean, yeah. this was a great conversation. Good conversation. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I tell you, really cool insights. I will tell you another word I do not use, and that is the word lead, leader, leadership. I Why don't is that? Use it again. Mm. Subjective. Leadership happens. Leadership is in the eye of the boulder, right? It happens in the moment. Like and beer is eye in the. If uh, eye I, the holder. I think of the word leader like the word hero. Right, you don't show up uh, to be a hero. It ha- that that happens. So, we talk an uh, awful lot about your leadership skills, leadership, leadership, and you know John Maxwell says leadership is influence, plain and simple. Well, influence is a little tricky, right? And it's not something that we show up and put in a box and, and manage. It's uh, so quit talking about it. Let's talk about what we can, because hmm. you're a leader in your outfit. I, I talk to the, these people throwing out the leadership, our leadership team, these leaders, and I want to say, dude, if you spend a little time in your back room, you'd find out your real leader is Fred back there who takes everybody out to smoke dope at lunchtime. That's, <laughs> the, that's the leader. He's, like the, the, he's the most influential person. In the yes. I like Fred. <laughs> yes. But it's like part of that Fred. white collar, you know, sort of supremacy that we, f- that you, you feel like we have to be a leader. Well, if everybody's a leader, who's doing the following? Too and, many chiefs, uh, not enough Indians. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. to me, it's about, you, you know, it's management is strict by strict definition you manage a process that's a thing in a box you manage you look up manage in the dictionary it says to get something done right to get it done Mm. is to is to manage and leadership is influence it's a little i don't you don't just set out to influence yeah so what word would you use like so so you manage a process right you manage people too no no see i I don't i wouldn't i do not 
I, I, you manage what you can manage. You work with people. Yes. You serve with people. Yep. It's the other thing about a manager is not this. Uh, sh- if To me, the difference between a manager and any other person on the team is just two things. One, the manager gets to decide who's on the team. That's a pretty big responsibility, right? Yep, yep. And number two, the manager has veto authority. And there is a time to win a vote one to ten. And I've yep. had to do it. But if yep. it's every day, something's wrong. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a battle all the time. Right? Otherwise, you're yeah. just a member of that team. And you are there with that team with a goal to win mm-hmm. as we define it by serve you know, serving. So let's work together. It's not management and labor and we gotta be leadership so that we can uh, inspire the peons let's just all show up and work together yeah that's I'll, great i will, I will yeah, say like <clears throat> from a corporate standpoint and this will be my last um take here is that for whatever reason i guess the longer someone works in corporate they love using their acronyms oh yeah mm. um i got one for the first time you never heard before mm. um uh someone sent an email person was out and they say oh this person's triple o uh, out of so three, out of yeah, I I didn't. I it took me a second. I'm like, what does this mean? I'm like, <laughs> why are you triple O? But like, even on the phone calls, they said, yeah, they're triple O, as if like, just to say out of office. <laughs> it's like, triple it's like, O. It's become out like its office. own language. But like, I feel like sometimes people use it as a crutch in business, Working uh, or even <laughs> even to sound smarter. And I just feel like you look dumb. Like yeah, I <laughs> I have I have a um, it was I took, lazy. Took some time to. Try, practice saying the word monosyllabic, uh, monosyllabic? but I, I have a monosyllabalism. That's my new uh, church. I want to start the church of monosyllabalism. <laughs> <laughs> one syllable. If you can't say it in one syllable, keep trying. And we the the jargon that we throw around is just is just yeah. Working, just simplify working the language with the government. You want to talk about syllables? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, acronyms and all kinds and of acronyms. Yeah. You can't you can't have a conversation without ten. Showing well, you, up. you end up speaking a different language than your customers do. Mm-hmm. See, that's, that's the thing. When when we're writing scripts, it's probably the single biggest thing we're trying to do is take all of the jargon that they've that a, a client has given us. Right? Mm-hmm. Say we do this and we do this and we do this, and it's all this technical verbiage. And we're just trying to make it approachable. Yeah, because right? it's like conversational. Because, again, there's there's definition and there's meaning. Mm-hmm. And there's time for you to be in there working on the definition in the box. Yep. This is the definition of our of our service offering. Yep. Your customer doesn't care about the definition. They want to know what it means to them. Yeah. What is the meaning mm-hmm. of this to them? So. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, we solved a few of the world's problems today. I think so, right? You know what? If they just, they just want to listen. If they just want to listen to <laughs> our podcast. <laughs> That's right. The world will be fixed. There'll be no more problems. The answer to the world is 42. Uh, just listen. Yeah. Um, well, again, thanks for coming on. Hey, it's my pleasure. I'll be coming back anytime. You Fantastic guys will, stuff. Any guy, yeah. Anytime you guys will have me. Yeah. Thank we'll you shoot, for shoot down some sacred cows. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Robin Green said that I uh, called it sacred tight. Ta- Sacred cow tipping, which I think is just perfect. Nice. Yeah, you, That's great. Yeah, sacred yeah. cow tipping. Love it. Um, thank you for tuning into the Think Fresh Move Forward podcast. See you next week.